there we go did i fix it i think i fixed it give me a thumbs up if I, if, if you can hear me okay now yes nice thanks boy hog so i got a oh, what can i hear oh i'm hearing there we go um i got a new machine so it's super swanky and fancy and all those nice things that you want and i had a whole intro thing that i did there that i've just been talking to myself for so let's start from the top so for those of you who don't know me i'm paul dc i'm a character modeler and i work in the animation industry primarily but some games and stuff as well uh, i'm the lead character modeler for a, an animation studio here in ireland and um today we're gonna do a bit of turkey sculpting so someone made the mistake earlier i seen it earlier saying a chicken it's and it's not a chicken and i can't tell if they're offending turkeys or i offended turkeys by drawing a chicken i thought it kind of looked like it, it does i didn't want to do like turkeys have this gnarly skin thing which for like an animated character I didn't think would necessarily work so much. So I went I went more simple. Oh Ashley's in. Hey Ashley. Everyone go check out Ashley A Adams or A Cubed. She's one of the streamers on Pixlogic as well. If you don't know her, check her out, she's amazing. Um so yeah. We're gonna be sculpting some turkeys. Cause to me, well I don't know in the States how you do Christmas dinner necessarily although I would love to because I've been to the States once and the food was incredible I was in LA but um, we don't have in Ireland we don't have Thanksgiving we have we ha but we do have Christmas turkey so to me this is a Christmassy thing so um, I got excited when I seen a couple of the guys were doing turkeys and I was like I need to jump on that bandwagon because I'm getting into this Christmassy mood now because I've done my own Santi this year where I've got the new machine and I also got I don't know can you see it there right over my head just here is a print that I got myself uh, that Gavin O'Donnell did he's a, a friend of mine and a, an amazing painter she let me grab it for you for a second hold on I have to show you this, it's awesome. Okay, hold on. Your phone's on backwards. Okay, here you go. Oh yeah, Christmas ham. Yeah, I've heard of that before. In movies and stuff. This is my most of my experience of America is like films and stuff. It's not legit. So here we go, can you see that? I don't want to knock anything over. So, hold on. Get that in the camera. So this is Gavin's uh, painting that Gavin did. It's very festive, as you can see. And uh, I ordered it off uh, Redbubble. And yeah, amazing. He's on Art Station and stuff as well. Check him out if you haven't. He's, his paintings are top notch. Probably the best, definitely the best Irish painter that I've ever seen. So be sure to check him out and Ashley. So that's your homework. Um oh, I've lost my festive music. Here we go. Um so yeah, definitely definitely check him out. But yeah, so I've been I've while doing some online Christmas shopping, I uh bought myself a few things. I also let me see, I need to see my camera here so I can show you this. You see this? It's my new my new 3D printer. The Anycubic Photon Mono X. And it is I've only done a bit of printing on it so far. And I haven't used can you see on the other side of me? <clears throat> you can kind of see the, the cure and wash machine is there as well. Which I haven't used at the moment because I don't have the what's it called? The alcohol uh solution that you put in it. Can't think of the name of it. It's a sciencey name. But uh, PLA is the short for it. But I haven't, I haven't got that. So, but I've done a few, and I've found out recently after handling them that like the resin, the uncured resin is like super toxic. So I've have to be. I've got a pack of gloves, 
uh, a whole tool kit for like cutting and measuring stuff all on its way and yeah so I'm yeah IPA yeah yeah it's yeah yeah so I, I've I've learned that I need to definitely wear gloves and be really careful and I need to probably move it somewhere else because I don't know I had like I can keep the windows open and stuff but I'm not sure there it is isopropyl alcohol fair play um yeah yeah exactly it's nasty stuff and like having it in an area in the house where I am regularly is probably not a good idea because I'm probably breeding that stuff and it gets if it gets on surfaces and it's not clean properly and it's toxic so it's just yeah so I need to figure out what to do with that find another place for it but anyway where were we yeah and I finally I don't know if some of you might remember ages ago I think I think I'd only started streaming with Pixelogic um, and I had said that I ordered a new machine and it finally came today because I got the 3080 which was obviously really hard to get to get for the company and stuff so it was delayed for I don't even know how long by the time I got it I'd forgotten nearly that I was getting it so it came today on a big crate it's a monster you can see it uh, if you follow me on Instagram you can find it there Um and I, I have pictures of it there but it's huge and it is awesome it's like it i i, I kind of I, I went and broke the bank on it just to get like a properly good machine but at the moment now i've only got two monitors you can see the tv is usually on with my logo and stuff on it but it's all display parts and only one hdmi and two the tv and one of my other monitors is a hdmi so and it so i need to go buy some display part uh, leads that's all so I can get that sorted tomorrow but I was frantically trying to get it all set up today before the stream started I didn't want to be like so I pulled out my old computer and stuff and had to rearrange everything you can kind of see if you've seen it before you can kind of see this my streams before the I turned everything around the TV was on this side of me so I've like switched everything around so it's all go today um, but I'm delighted with that so let's use it this is the first time I'm sculpting with my new machine um, so yeah we're going to do so actually maybe you guys can pick because I don't know which one I want to start with and I think the last stream I kind of concentrated a little bit less on the chat and sculpted a little bit more and I got a lot more done than I usually would uh, and some people seem to like that so I might try that again this time um, and any random like can cause it to have irre uh, yeah, irregularities yeah. the, se the second one depend is so I'm assuming you're going left to right because that's how we read so I'm assuming you mean this guy I'll pick a lady that's the lady the first one Okay, we've got two, I'm going to say two votes for the lady. Yeah, right, yeah, cool. Oh, that's, now you, you I, I should not have asked you, these are going to, Feli's even it back out again, flip a coin. I like the right one, so I think that's three to the right side. So in five, four, oh, you've had to even it out again. <laughs> Three, two, one, mail. Okay, so we got the mail. We're on the mail. Cool. We're going with the mail. <laughs> My girlfriend just tried to mess with the chat there and ruin my day. Ah, there's Gav as well. Ah, these are all in, and she's very good. Um, Natalie from Ukraine, how's it going? Okay. Flip a coin, you mad joke. Yeah, I probably should have flipped a coin. Anyway, okay, so we're going with the mail first. So we have, actually we can just drop that down here. 
Let's see. All right. So, like I said, I think we're going to try just focus a little bit less on the chat and more on the sculpting. Not completely ignore the chat, but um, I just recently got ZBrush cards for info. I'm looking so forward to seeing how you tackle the beginning. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. So, so I always try to start from scratch with these guys on the stream. Oh, do you know what I didn't do? That I need to do. Um, load my hotkeys. This is the type of stuff you forget. Okay, so this should be right now. Oh, lovely. Okay, here we go. Yes, we're in business. All right. See how we're going to tackle this. Trying to, to get myself in a bit of a Christmassy, wholesome type of mood. I don't generally. I like some Christmas songs, but like, there's there's a fair few that I just find are too a bit too cheesy and stuff. I do enjoy like the festiveness of it, but just as songs to listen to, I don't so much. So I'm listening to like Frank Sinatra and stuff, and like you know like Summertime, La Vie en Rose, all that kind of stuff. Bit of art, Benny King, bit of Stand by Me, can't go wrong. Usually I try to sculpt a little bit, not this, not actually what I'm doing on the stream, but just sculpt a little bit before I start, just kind of warm up. But because I was setting everything up, I didn't get to do that this time, unfortunately. But I think we are. So I'll just see you in mesh. So, it's my usual, um, Way of working, I um, working pieces, working chunks, separating the primitives, and Z remeshing low because it makes smooth and alt smooth. So shift, press, and then lift shift, and you're in alt smooth. It averages the surface. It's very important for like getting clean. Um, clean curves <laughs> you got this thanks VK It's something I actually I love. I haven't sculpted a lot of poultry over my career, but I have a few times and I always enjoy it. There's a lot of cool shapes. So I'm gonna go up to subdivisions here. And start kind of pulling landmarks out. <clears throat> figuring out where things are we want to get all the main bits in first as quick as we can so we have all the the forms in place more or less and then we can work them relative to each other because trying to work on forms in isolation is never a good idea Because uh, everything is relative to each other.
show you that beacon. Oh, and just, yeah. I know it's probably important to say because a lot of people tend to ask on the other streams. This is my own sketch. I didn't take this from. I'm not, not mentioning the artist. He's right in front of you. Oh, I don't want to do this. Split them. No. See mesh. Uh, the alt smooth is kind of awkward. You have to hold shift like you're gonna smooth, but let go of shift then while you're actually brushing. If you like. Uh, what do you think about the alt smooth changes in the upcoming ZBrush? Um, I actually didn't see that. I know I could have just missed that because I mentioned on the last stream I've been f quite uh, busy at the moment because I just started in a new studio recently and stuff. So um, so I haven't been. Uh, keeping an eye on things like I usually would. What's the what's the change to the alt smooth they heard of? What is this? A creature or a duck? <laughs> it's supposed to be a turkey. Maybe I, I I'm starting to feel like I may have not done a turkey justice in my drawing. Although I did kinda of keep it um I definitely could have made it look more like a turkey, but I actually, turkeys are kind of ugly. They've got that weird skin on their heads. And I wanted to do a very kind of, um, I'm really trying not to say Disney-esque, <laughs> but pretty much um, stylized kind of thing. Hey Javid, I'm not too bad now. I'm pretty good, actually. With all my new toys. Alright, let's get the eyes in. Let's concentrate here. So it's important to make the eyes quite big. So, because if you make them small, the curvature is too much. It tends to be too much. For a, a, a more stylized character that has those big eyes. Is ZBrush worth the price tag? Yes. I mean, I'm. It's it's literally it's the software that got me into the industry, as in when I became more interested in three D. Um, certainly, I think it's a very. As a sculptor, it's to me there's no better software. Or anything that even. For me, compares for all the different features and brushes and stuff. Uh, I would say absolutely. Especially considering you pay it once and you never pay it again. That's uh, there's not many softwares doing that. Not many companies doing that, especially for softwares does as much as ZBrush does.
Glad to see you too, Javid. Um, I've been going for about four months in Blender, but all the good tutorials are in ZBrush. Cool. Yeah, ZBrush is amazing. It's my go to. a lot of time at the beginning. I wonder if Ashley's still there. Because I'm not actually sure what the kind of rules are for like going over time. And I should find that out. Keep me into it. Yeah, I was streaming two and a half hours, but you can still, you can just fill my whole time. Just do it home, mate. <laughs> just keep going. Stop everyone for streaming. Just never, never end the stream. Um, Alright, so you might be able to go over for a little bit then. It's good to know. Cheers, Ash. Not you, Ash. The other mesh. <laughs> you always need more Ash. There you go, guys. What do you think my shapes? So like when I'm sculpting, uh, something I don't I haven't talked too much about a little bit is uh, just how I'm thinking about uh, how the light's gonna work with it later when I render. So like I want to have a top-down light of sorts, in some way uh, helps to describe the form the forms. Um. So. I think like I need to get the eyes inset, but what I don't want is to inset them so much that one it's unnatural looking obviously and two that the brows cast the complete shadow and it makes it really hard to light it properly. So I was just thinking ahead a little bit. Do the similar thing when I'm like sculpting ears for characters or noses. It's just to make sure if I want to use a uh, subsurface scattering that they're uh, not too thick, that the light will pass through. I have to think of uh, so I actually started calling me the D's, and Paul Gabri calls me the D's as well, and I call them I. Um, a while ago I can't remember how or why we started giving each other nicknames on Ash you just came out with it um, <laughs> but uh, let's come up here I think your Dublin name would be Asho so 
there you go. What do you think of that? Our nicknames are much more kind of rugged, I think. Or, well, I guess. Depends on your perspective, I suppose. Uh, no. I mean, it's a nickname, but it wouldn't be a Dublin nickname. Ashup. Ashup. Yeah, I mean, it's a nickname. I hear be. It's always. So Dublin nicknames always are. Um, <coughs> either end with like ER, IE, or O. So like, um, I had a friend of mine years ago, he's my next door neighbor, his name was Alan Hopkins. So he became Hoppo. Um, I, my second name is kind of awkward to turn into. So my se people just call me DC because you can't, like it's already got the E at the end of it. So you can't, like DSR doesn't work or DSO. So, uh, and my mother actually picked my name Paul because you can't shorten it. That was literally her reason. No, no. And then she named my other brother Daniel, which can be Danny or Dano or Dan. Which three three easy ones is pretty much as easy as it gets when it comes to shortening names. So don't know that idea went out the window on our second child apparently. But yeah, I got Paul. Um, so no one can shorten it which is to me a very strange reason to name your child but what are you going to do so yeah our like I had another mate Stuart he was Stewie um, Stee Stephen is Stee or Steel I mean I, I assume Stee is you'd use that elsewhere as well in the world but yeah Steel or then his name is Stephen Brown so he was also called Browner so that's the idea so I can't like it could, like the only other one I could think of would be like Adams are but that's too long so you wouldn't do it or yeah my brother's name is Adam we call him Adzar Get another. It's a pendosphere. Nope. Um, if, you, if you block mesh and moya, then important is ZBrush. Do we have to do we have to subdivide or use Dynamesh or use any other technique? You don't have to. I mean, if you bring a mesh in from another software. Uh, nothing there's no rule like you have to dynamesh it for ZBrush to work or anything or you have to subdivide it it'll all the brushes everything still works exactly the same and um, the only reason you'd subdivide it is if you want to actually oh nope there we go Um, you want to be able to sculpt detail into it you can also just, um, if you hit, so to subdivide, the shock for subdivide is um, control D. But if you just hit D, you get dynamic subdivision, which is also here. In under geometry, you got dynamic subdivision. So you can see here if I select this. So that's like uh, smooth preview is in my, it's the same kind of thing. And I use that all the time. If I don't need to do like detail, especially when you're doing like stylized characters and you don't necessarily, like if I'm doing a jacket or something and I can just push some loops around to create a crease rather than actually going in and sculpting it, then I'll do that. And um, <clears throat> depending, you know, if I need to get 
like really heavy on the creases and stuff then I'll just start sculpting but um, and I'll use dynamic subdivision and then I can just put like a, a texture on it when I'm like a cloth kind of texture on it when I'm rendering I'm at the, before I render so no is the short answer um, is your brother an artist too? Not even close. I'm the only person in my family. Like, I'm not the only person in my family, I wouldn't say that's necessarily, like, artistic. But I'm definitely the only one that, like, really takes it seriously. That like, does it as a career and stuff. Like, no one else in my family is anything close to that. Like, my my aunt is kind of artistic. Um, again, she's artistic as a... You know, she's... she No, she is. That's... I shouldn't say kind of she is she um she likes kind of like arts and crafts type stuff she likes to do little things like that and little paintings and stuff um and my mom works in a school she's a special needs assistant in a school and she does a lot of like she pretty much I think it started because the teachers in the school found out that I was like a working artist and so they were like oh, my mom's name is Helen they were like Helen you can do all the art then just assuming like oh Paul will help her and it'll all look right um, which I do sometimes help her with some stuff like I'll draw something for her and then she'll paint it or bring it into the school and the kids will paint it that kind of thing but uh, yeah uh, for the most part that's that's really it. Like my brother is not artistic whatsoever. If you handed him a pencil, he'd probably try to hammer a nail with it. How are you zero uh how are you zero mesh in specific pieces of the same subtool? Uh they're not the same subtool is the trick. Um like these are all separate subtools. And I'm just using, I have a keyboard shortcut to, to Z remesh. So yeah, you see here, like I'm not subdividing. I don't want anything like that. Uh, just make sure there's no creases. And I'll always start like this, you know. Um, keeping everything low poly, trying to zero mesh in a way that's I'm get like that like I could add a support loop that follows all the way around doesn't spiral anywhere or anything like that so and uh, once because I have that low poly like it's easy like I said to get that to use all smooth like to average out the the surface and get like nice clean curves where when you're using dynamesh it's so dense like all smooth doesn't do much at all you have to sit there scrubbing it for ages and it'll never get it even Um. so that's why like when I'm for the sake of like doing this kind of work um, it's not necessarily as you have to fight it more you have to spend ages kind of trying to smooth out the surface where all smoothing your low poly is much easier oh Sean's in hey Sean no uh, nobody in my family has any idea that I do anything remotely artistic they don't know you're keeping it a secret why would they freak out like? She showed them, man, you're good. They'd be impressed. Anyone I know, like even today, it was 
the delivery man was dropping off the computer and it was in a big it was wrapped up in a crate and he was telling me like all these weird stuffs like all this weird stuff since like lockdowns and stuff like that he's had to deliver like pianos and stuff and um he was like what is in this box it's massive and i told him it was a computer and he was kind of like that's some computer what do you need something like that for and i told him i was working in the animation industry as a as a character artist and uh, i always say character artist because if you say modeler they they don't know what to where to even begin with you um so i always just say character artist um which isn't entirely not true because i also design so uh i'm not necessarily lying to them and uh yeah or even like you know before the lockdown like in taxis and stuff some were like so what do you do for a living or whatever and you tell them and anyone you tell they're they're generally in ireland at least and i'd imagine a lot of the uk too i probably if you're in la or something it's probably not as impressive because there's a lot more people there doing that kind of thing but here it's very few like i don't know anyone else outside of where i work that actually does this kind of work none of my friends no one uh, i'd imagine you're probably in the same boat sean by the sounds of it ah okay um, Paul, can you tell me some tips to create clean topology for low poly? It's for micro poly. Clean tips to create clean topology. That's a pretty loaded question. Um, like making clean topology is a whole skill in itself, especially for characters, because you have to think about deformation and how how so how would they move. Uh, it's a whole you know as a as a car being a character modeler is a very intricate job actually more intricate than probably a lot of people think because you know you got to learn to be a, a good sculptor um and you got to learn like the artistic side of things shape language and uh form how to make appealing shapes, uh, anatomy, and not just human anatomy, like all sorts um, of different anatomy. Will be a buffalo that you have to make one day. Um, I'm faffing with this guy now because I'm chatting too much, falling back into it. Um, just to make his his waddle. Let's call his waddle. Bit, this the, let's just throw this chuck this in here I'll have subdivisions there we go um, what was I saying yeah it's it's a complicated so yeah you've got to do all that and then on top of that you've got to learn how to like retopologize as well you've got to learn how to do blend shapes um which is very much a mixture of the two things um like in terms of it's artistic and very technical um you know there's a there's a million ways to do good topology and just as many to do bad yeah it's, it's uh, yeah, and it really makes all the difference you know when you hand the uh, Especially if you have to do like blend shapes on bad topology, it's a nightmare. Um, where if you've got good topology, just for the, for you for your sake doing blend shapes and for the rigger's sake, and then for the animator's sake and for the character's sake, it's gonna make a huge difference. And you can tell, like I've met a couple of people, but one in particular, a guy uh, Jorge Alonso. Unfortunately, you won't find them on the guard station or anything. He's a, what me and Gav call a ghost uh, of the industry. He's one of those people you meet in studios that are incredible, but like can't find them online. Um, I know a few of them. And... Uh, he... 
he taught me like a crazy uh, more than anyone like in terms of amount learned he's taught me more than anyone I know ever um, he's a, an absolute fountain of knowledge I think what ways are all it's probably just sitting there like that. Um Waddle. So yeah, it's a really complicated job, and uh, like uh, that's not to scare anyone from doing it. Like it's very doable, and you you don't learn it all in one go. Obviously, you know you you learn over time. Like when I started in the industry, um, I could just sculpt. I didn't know how to do topology. I didn't know how to do blend shapes, and I I learned on the job from people around me in the studio and practice and you know it's like the same way artistically like you're always learning new things new techniques and there's always new problems that pop up you know especially with like with humans you can pick it up you know just there's, there's less variables involved where with animals in different styles and stuff you yeah, okay, can get. That's it. That's usually what where the problems arise is when you're doing animals in different styles. How do I? I think I need a separate piece. I need to panel beat this in to be the corner. Chicken anatomy, exactly. Actually, what was it? Yeah, the, uh, animals have caused me awful problems. Doing goats that need to dance and do karate or whatever, and then or and birds as well with their wings. Um, there's all sorts of problems that can come up, even how you pose the character for rigging. I'd be surprised how easy it is to get that wrong. I've seen it many a time. Something I've seen recently, for example, just to give you an example of like stuff that if you haven't experienced that kind of problem or someone else's experience that they can explain it to you. You pose a character. So let me see where where he is. So see from the side there, the way the the neck goes forward. It's not it's not straight up like this. It's forward. So when you pose a character for rigging, it should be like that. And the reason being if you pose it like this, so you can try this now. Pull, pull your head back so your chin is kind of driven back into your neck. And open your mouth. And you can feel the tension in here. Where if it's forward, you can open your mouth more. You can't open your mouth all the way. So your jugular is in the way. Um, and it's the same problem with a, a rigged character. So like, uh, if the if it's back and the animator needs to do like a scream or whatever the the neck here will will just intersect They'll, it'll flip and you know when your character is rigged and being tested in animation it's a pain in the ass to get that note back so you want to try avoid 
um, think of it before it happens. to dynamesh these together. The beak parts, this part and these two. I'll scope them into place so they work. <coughs> Yeah, I could probably talk a little bit, I, I, maybe not on this stream, maybe on another stream, um, talk a little, a little bit about, like, I, I have experience with, like, you know, doing retopo and creating production characters, been doing it for a good few years now, so, um, maybe we can talk a little bit about that on another stream, just how to set, um, set up a character properly. I'd have to work out how to really, because it, it's a lot of information. You know what I mean? It's not something you could do in an hour. And you'd need examples. So, you know, someone who's maybe not in the industry. Um, can understand. Uh, ZBrush default program to use in game development. Yeah. Yeah, I've never, <clears throat> I've never worked for a company, freelance or full time. Um, that doesn't have ZBrush. That doesn't use ZBrush. It's the industry standard. Thanks, Ina. Yeah, okay, cool. I can, yeah, I can try to think up a, a stream and go through the technical stuff a little bit. I usually, I usually don't really talk about that stuff as much because it's, um, like I know for professionals it's good to know, but like if you've never worked in a studio or anything, it's like, it's too much information at that point like you don't know enough you know it's kind of like showing someone how to use how Ziri mesh use how to use Ziri mesh and they don't know how to navigate the canvas they don't know how to turn and stuff and you're showing them how to use fiber mesh you know what i mean um And I, I think as well, it's not, it doesn't have the same kind of entertainment value as seeing a sculpt. It's like watching a musician explain how chords are constructed instead of listening to them play. Which, as not to say, some people will find that interesting. I'd find that interesting. a little bit more
do is because we've got these, we've got our poly groups. Smear the inside. So I'm going to duplicate the head and kill the subdivisions and then I'm going to use the topo brush, turn off symmetry and I'm just killing the subdivision so I can use the topo brush on it and I'm going to do something like this. this um, oh. is that okay that should be fine I think this inset poly group no. the other way around now that we have extrude Is that the quote? Class there. Oh, insert. So now, see, we're actually box modeling in ZBrush. So just use uh, <clears throat> it's project, project all, and I have that as as a shotgun key. So I just snapped it to the head.
Oh, hey, Spicer. Spicer McElroy is in. The man, the myth, the legend. Far to seeing you. Oh, I've missed it. Oh, yeah. What's up, brother? How the hell are you? Oh, that print. Yeah, the print came out really clean. That printer. If any of you guys are thinking of getting a printer and you have... It's not it's not expensive for what it is, I wouldn't say. Uh, I mean, that's relative, though, I guess. So, uh, But it's, look it up, Photon Mono X, because the prints are coming out like fast and amazingly clean. Um, I haven't used I hadn't used the printer in a couple of years, uh, and the technology obviously has been kind of progressing pretty quickly over the last few years. And yeah, I mean, I was printing like a small head, and it was taking like twenty hours. It was crazy, and it would come out, and and then it'd fail, like all the time and yeah where that it just works and fast it's great Let's see i wonder if i do this Pfft. well that didn't work let's see here Um, someone got to tell the musicians how to make cards yeah exactly this is true this is true I'd say it's there's a time and a place though you know Would you say blocking is the most important part of the sculpt? I would. I would indeed. And do say that regularly. Say, can't uh, overstate it. If your blocking is wrong, everything is wrong. It'll never be right. It sounds dramatic, but. I went out making topology for that and I ended up zero meshing it anyway. Um, Spicer, did you make a turkey? I didn't see if you made a turkey. I only I can only watch your streams. I discovered recently why I was missing Spicer's streams. It's because we're on opposite sides of the world, and I am. If I'm not asleep while he's streaming, it's it means. I'm sleeping in for work in the morning because it is super late at that stage here. It's like three in the morning or something crazy like that. Oh, no. Ah, I can just extrude this to be grand. And I actually kind of like there's like this by accident, a happy accident when I was sketching. Feeling that so much, <clears throat> it's too samey. Yeah, works from the angle, I guess. Let's 
get this guy with some eyelids. So, for those of you who haven't seen me do this before, trick with eyelids. Let's use the topology brush. Torquey just Krampus yeah your Krampus was awesome man um, I got my Elegu Mars Pro today I'm gonna be printing up a storm tomorrow Delhi do you know what you're gonna print yet have you picked out like have you got a, a, a print ready to go I must look up that printer I have to get I found out <laughs> I was you know I got excited about using it and I was just hammering away using it and uh, then I was like I better look up like how to clean the the like tray and stuff properly and I was watching a video I was talking about this earlier um, but the so I was watching this video on how to clean it and stuff and the guy was like make sure you wear gloves uncured resin is highly toxic and the I the IPA, right? Superb. I can't remember. I can never remember the name. It's IPA. The alcohol they do it. They wash it in. Is really bad, and everything is really bad to touch or sniff or anything. Inhale. Um. <laughs> been only short of drinking the stuff, so <laughs> which is fine. I'll be alright. I know now, but yeah, I was being an idiot. Classic Paul. Um, I got too excited. But uh, I've ordered a bunch of stuff now, so I can't really use it until I get like all the gloves and get the, the stuff for the, the washing it properly and everything. I got the cure and wash machine actually. Actually, the cure and wash machine is a godsend because it saves like a lot of hassle when it comes to cleaning the sculpts because that's where like most of the work ends, you know, in terms of the actual printing. It's where all the work really is. I did find actually. So. Uh, I'll keep this brief. Um, the the slicer software that comes with it leaves these tubes, like supports, inside your hollow sculpt, but they're straight tubes from top to bottom, <clears throat> and they, they like keep the resin inside of it. So there's like, you can see it when it's clear resin. Like if you turn it, you can see the bubbles going up and down from all the resin that's caught inside. And there's no way, like you'd have to bore holes all over it to let all the resin out. So that's a bit unfortunate. Like I know, I think on the farm labs, one is the last one I used, like way back, one of the older ones. And it was more like branching supports so all the resin could get out. So that was a weird one. And again, I'm still... I've only got it recently, so maybe there's something I'm missing, but that is upsetting when I realized how much resin was stuck inside the body of the the reverend I'd printed. Give me this.
Thanks, Alex. Um, I need to see your Thor printed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I love um, your, like, uh, like superhero sculpts, spice of the, the anatomy on them. I love good anatomy. That's awkward, I thought you were talking to me. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yeah, I've got this. Where's that other head? Where is that? There it is. Yep. So I can delete that. So yeah, when I get these done, I'd like to do like a a nice render, as if they're out in the street, and she's passing him. He's turned his head. Two flirty turkeys. You use eyes extractor technique. Is that what that's called? The eyes extractor technique. I find like using the eyelids, making the eyelids separately is a lot less work than trying to sculpt eyes or eyelids. Like when you're trying to make something clean. to this oh here I'll show you something so the last sculpt a lot of people asked me about the eyes so I'll show you how I paint eyes so I'm using um, toy plastic uh, we'll do both for now and switch back to RGB So, what color will we do his eyes? What color will we do his eyes? Brown, maybe? And we can do this now. So fill, take your brown, go down super dark, pretty desaturated. So rather than being lazy about this, still properly. The 
do it properly. So to start with, I'll go about this color here and fill and then go white. just lightly so it's white to the front fades away as it goes back and then I should let's subdivide this again So that looks okay. Um, and then, so we wanna go brown, so we're gonna go right down to the darkest, fill that in, and then flip it and just tap a couple of times. So the to shrink the mask, so that's covering now the outer side of that. Then we go up to like a brown, just actually use a bit darker on the top and then more saturated and bright at the bottom oh. and then just another mask in the middle C to grab that dark color there. There you go. And you can also, yeah, I have the light already. Is already for this shape. Sometimes <clears throat> I'll pull the light down so it's more central at the front. Is this a door? Do you know what I need? Okay, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's probably not gonna help it not look like a duck, but whatever. No, actually, I know it will. Too bad, Robo Wheels. How are you? Um, okay. Um, Paul, would you use the eye painting in the final render yet? Yeah. I did for the last one. Um, a bunch of people asked me about how I did the eye on um, Reverend Green, the Cluedo one, and that's how I did it. And I just used that as a texture. And then on the shader, like had a specular shader. And that was that.
much I can just, so I can just add a loop, get a crease there. That's nice and clean. Pose. Let's pull that mount up more. I wish I could turn that on by default when I go into T pose mesh. Turn symmetry on. So I always forget. Yes, you know. Yeah, of course you can. Did we try to use ZBrush Dynamic <coughs> for that hanging part? Um, yeah, like, there's, I suppose, a, like, I could also use the deformers. There's always a multitude of ways, but I kind of like just masking and pulling it around. I find it quicker. I don't think, like, dynamic would treat it like cloth, so it wouldn't keep the volume. Um, so I probably wouldn't use dynamic necessarily for that particular thing.
Does this look like a torpy to anybody yet? I can't tell anymore. After you use T-Pose, can we keep high poly groups? Yeah, when you use uh, T-Pose, there's a button to transpose on transpose master to keep poly groups if you are ever. When you use T-Pose, it <clears throat> merges everything into one and uses all the lowest subdivisions. And when you hit T-Pose, when you go back to T-Pose, sorry, when you hit T-Pose mesh, when you go back to uh, subtools, um, it returns all the meshes to the way they were in terms of like polygroups and subdivision levels um, it just moves them to where you place them while you were in T-Pose mesh does that answer your question? it looks like a board from Pixar well that's cool, that's good did I just see, oh no, I thought I was seeing Shane Olsen in there wait Oh, I did see Shane. What's up, Shane? Turkey nubbin. <laughs> I want to give him big ears now and give him, give him his ear nubbins. How's things, Shane? I feel like, I, like, guys, if any is somehow don't know who Shane Olsen is, definitely go check out Shane Olsen. And his 3D character workshop. He like teaches half the world of um, uh, 3D like ZBrush artists character art. And uh, he's amazing. And he streams as well with, with Pixelogic. I, like part of me is almost like Shane is so well known. I feel like it's almost insulting to, <laughs> to be like if any of you don't know. Um... Cheers, Shane. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, okay, so it looks like a board from Pixar. So that's cool. I'll take that. That's a compliment. That was kind of what I was going for. I, I When I was saying earlier, I was kind of going for like a nice kind of stylized, wholesome feel. I think like Pixar and... Disney have that kind of feel across their characters, like this kind of wholesome vibe to it. Makes them really appealing. Makes them makes you want to kind of vouch for them. So I wait to use T-Pose and keep subdivision levels. Oh, um, no. Yeah, like that's kind of... 
goes against the function of it because it's t pose is not you can you can i mean you could delete all the lower subdivision levels or you could just go so let me see uh oh, no it's up here sorry subdivisions go all high that will put everything on the highest subdivision and then you can merge visible in a new tool but you can't transfer that back over and um it's not really the function like t pose mesh is made for like it's better or well it's it's made for like going in and making big moves like moving all the face forward say like all the different subdivisions so like doing that in with subdivisions doesn't really make sense because it's going to make it you're just going to get a bunch of cleanup that you're going to have to do because it's going to get all lumpy So the mistake that I'm making right now is I'm not looking at my concept enough. Seen it. Okay, so hitting, yeah, Shane saying hitting T pose is like pausing your subdivision levels, it combines everything together and going to the lowest level so you can pose it. Uh, then, when you are done posing, you can hit T pose to sub T to bring your subdivision levels back exactly yeah yeah that was a good way of putting it it's like pausing it your your subdivision levels I should just get caught. I wish you just could listen to this music. Again. This is like old jazz. <laughs> I had no idea with my head just bobbing back and forward. Okay. Alright, okay, 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 okay. What time is it? Yeah, we're doing good, we're good. Right, so. Extrude these in. We're gonna start dynamishing some stuff together. So for this, I usually just like I'm gonna put double on so I can see what I'm doing. Go right in. So when I dynamesh together, it's all the way in. It's not trying to make this shelf because oh. yeah, it's just easier. It's not even the dynamesh that's a problem. It's C remeshing and reprojecting after the fact. That's where it becomes a problem like you could um, use um, remesh by union as well but it's yeah it's just when I try to Z remesh it again it's really it's a really awkward shape for it to Z remesh So I'll just add some spot loops. This is creased, which I don't want. 
That's all I'm doing. I control the bevel. Try see what it's like if I widen the back of the head. So you bought that insane computer, I did buy that insane computer. Um Well I I I just literally started it up today, just before the stream. Um so I haven't got to really put it to the test yet. I mean in terms of ZBrush, the extra like I like my ass computer was too old. There was no excuse for not updating for that long <clears throat> and it was like uh, I think it was like 32 gigs of RAM um, where now I've got 128 and like it was super old RAM it's just awful but it did me it did me proud for a long time like everything in my portfolio was done on it so it goes to show you don't need like super hot computer to do this kind of work but it does help because now i can render faster and the idea of rendering faster even is just so you know if i render and something something small doesn't quite work if rendering a new a new if going back and rendering again doesn't take long it's not a big deal then i'll do it where if i have to like leave it overnight then i'm like oh it's fine maybe i'll paint it out in photoshop maybe something like that but sometimes you can't paint something out in photoshop necessarily well so um ah that's annoying me uh but yeah in terms of zbrush um you know it means i can go up higher subdivision levels without getting any issues ZBrush is maybe just the, the RAM I have to worry about, so it's more like rendering. I don't really play games on the on my computer, it's just pretty much use it for work. Um I'd only kind of Yeah, I wouldn't be like I didn't get it for that reason, you know. I wouldn't be not like I play games, the odd one. Like if I'm really excited about a game, like But even that, it's not that often that I'd be super excited for a game. God of War was the last one. 
can't really think of a game that I'm super excited about at the moment. Oh well, Cyberpunk. Sorry, I am. I am. I'm, I do want to play that. My laptop got super hot and broke. That's really sad. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Um, I've, I'm missing loads here. Spicer, can't believe how little time it takes you to bring such huge amounts of personality to your character as well. Thanks, thanks a lot, Spicer. That's quite a compliment. Um, yeah, I, if I do, I didn't even know I was doing that quickly. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I kind of talked about like I was talking with. A good while ago now, with a couple of mates from work, like other artists, about like what kind of artists we are was a kind of conversation, and I think I came to the conclusion that I'm I'm probably actually like obviously I do full body characters, but I'm more of a I'm like a three D portrait artist, if like you know what I mean, like or a caricature, three D caricature, a heart, I guess. But thanks a lot, boys. So that's it's a lovely thing to, to hear, especially from a caliber of artists as yourself. Where is Polygroup? So now we're going to make some little eyelashes for him. Let's actually get rid of this. See how quick that saved. That's the first time I was like, whoa. <laughs> Can't wait to put this computer to the test. It's it's massive. If you haven't seen it, that's on my Instagram. It is massive. Like it's 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 just in general the biggest computer I think I've ever seen. But uh, yeah, it's got like. I can't even remember the specs now, it's that long ago since I actually ordered the thing. It's got 3080 in it. 128 gigs of RAM. The Ryzen Threadripper. I, do, I can't remember the name. Um, I can't remember the name. It's like 64 cores. I, it was expensive, I don't know, I remember that much. What else? Yeah, I mean, that's really the important stuff. But yeah, it's 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 re oh god damn it. Okay, duplicate this. I've deleted the actual oil. I thought I duplicated it, but I didn't. But I can just duplicate that and then go back in the other sub tool to where we had the eyelashes. So if there I happen to you, don't delete the sub tool because you've messed it up. Go again. I think your CPU fan goes crazy trying to, can you just hear the fan? And yeah, 64 cars, all the cars. I was carrying it up the stairs today and it's heavy. Um, but I was laughing, we were bringing it up the lads, were slagging me or whatever. But uh, it came down to like, it's only heavy because of all the cars. It's like even getting out of the box. I have, there's a video of me getting it out of the box. I don't know whether I want to share it though because it's an absolute farce and I nearly threw me and it down the stairs. Um, yeah, can you hear the fan? When I turned it on, it scared me because it's it was really loud, but it pretty quickly just calmed down. It's got all the lights and everything. It looks so badass. 
I love it. Um, can't find my PC post. It's in my story. Tip of shoes utilizes CPU cores more than anything. More than RAM. Oh, I didn't know that. I always thought it was RAM. Oh, well. I mean, I got those too. <laughs> Look at those snobby, fancy computer owners now. Um, what am I doing here? Faffing. Faffing around. It's too dark. It's still too dark, but anyway. So I'm going to grab this body group. That way I can control the thickness. thick okay it's also still too dark all right what time is it all right let's see should we break the symmetry now Oh, your dog yeah it took the, the dog was for that's actually not like he's not a big dog but he's he's not small necessarily like he's a medium-ish dog just below medium size dog like it's above i think how big is this thing like i can't get it under my table or anything it's it's huge just to, it's shockingly Huge. It's I I think I can't remember the case. Like C, it's like the Coolmaster C seven CM seven hundred something like that. I think it is. If you asked me like months ago when I actually ordered the thing, what the specs were, I could tell you off the top of my head, but. Took so long to get here. Can't remember half of it now. Right, so T pose mesh. Screw it, we're gonna break the symmetry. Let's have the lols. So I don't wanna <clears throat> I'm masking the eyes because I don't wanna I want the eyes to stay as spheres. to pull that waddle his waddle around with him or sorry not the waddle actually what's this bit called this that's the nubbin <laughs> it's the nubbin turkey nubbin oh i need to mask the eyes Like 
Yeah, I had to do a chicken <laughs> walk before, I think it was. And I had to look up like, or spent like a day talking about waddles and combs and, j and trying to figure out what giblets were. I never knew what giblets were. It's just the, oh no, I can't remember. It's the pieces inside that you can eat or you can't eat. I can't remember. It's one of those. I love, this is like my favorite part. Cause when I'm sculpting and I know I'm gonna break the symmetry, I'm like always in my head imagining it and trying not to jump ahead and break it too early. I make uh, life harder for myself and things take longer because I've, but, uh, cause I've done it too early, but <clears throat> I love doing it cause it's just, really the character really comes to life a lot more when you break the symmetry that's a bit much let's do let's just keep a nice c chord i think Pull that. Back a little bit. You make gravy with giblets. It's the neck and kidney and stuff. Yeah, there you go. See, Sean, educated man. Always said that about you. Um. Yeah. Because I had no idea what, what giblets were. I was like, do I need to sculpt the giblets? So there you go. Not educated in the world of farming. Of you. Nubbin! It's the nubbin, it's the talking nubbin. This is why Shane has to come keep annoying me. Make sure I'm not making amateur mistakes. It's the nubbin. I'm gonna get that written on my wall. Duke, it's not, it's not a duck. Cool master coffin size, yeah. Yeah, you could, I could probably. No, I could get into it. I could get the dog into it. Not that I would do that, but I could get the dog into it. Like I could fit the dog inside it with the graphics card and everything. But I would never do that. Smiling too much after saying that. <laughs> no, I think actually, Boomer. That's my dog's name, by the way. For those who don't know, he's been on. He's been on some of your streams. He's like a cat. It's like he thinks he's a cat. Like the way he climbs stuff, and he likes to tuck himself into small spaces. Uh, like even when he's. When he's in here, um, I can hear him at the door. Um, he'll like tuck in between the, you know, like the spokes of the leg of the chair. He'll like get in there and I won't know. And I'll go to move and hear he'll bark or whatever. I, he never learns uh, what kind of dog. He's, he's actually a rescue, so um, he was found on the side of the motorway and kind of banged up so what i don't know he's like a he's kind of like a 
A sheepdog looking ish, I don't know. But smaller. Do you remember the specs on the dog? Yeah, no, I found him too long ago. Um, let's do... This. I need to find some like royalty free jazz because this is... What I'm listening to is like really set in a nice tone right now. What <laughs> a uh, mini ITX wink. just seen Shania Paul G told me that yeah he is like him and Joseph are like we, we were doing the tips and like all the tips I was like these are like there's a there was loads of them that I didn't know that were like properly helpful um, and every single one Paul and Joseph added to them and it was gold dust every single time. That's it. And and um, Gabe, or, yeah, right, Gabesy. Yeah, Gabesy. Yeah, yeah. Gabesy is his Dublin nickname. I'm trying to think. What would yours be, Shane? Your Dublin nickname. Ashley's is Asho. I guess it'd be Shano. I'm trying to think, is there something we could do with your... Well, what's your second name? No. <laughs> so I was saying, it's either... It's it's kind of like cut the name and then add an I E an E R or an O. So I'm not gonna call you Ulcer. Ulci is too. It's not. I don't know. It's not grungy enough for a Dublin nickname. I don't think. Um. I, I mean. Yeah, Shino. So we like, uh, you know, as as teenagers, we like Shane. Are you stalling it around to the chipper? <laughs> See if anyone knows what that means. I'd love to know if anyone knows what that means. If I said Shane, I'll stall it around to the chipper. Will this model be muscular now? No, no, just kind of clean, easy shapes. It's more about the. It's more about the expression, really, than anything. Shane all since my last name is Olsen yeah oh it's Swedish cool Um. yeah okay that's kind of anticlimactic
How do we can come up with something else? I have to brainstorm. I have to brainstorm that one. I'll ask if you know um, uh, Rory Bjorkman, another Irish uh, modeler, uh, and a and a hugely talented one at that, um, and a good friend of mine. He's great with coming up with names and stuff like that. Pull up to the chip shop. Yeah, drive to the fish and chips. Yeah, basically. Well, stall it just doesn't mean drive, or, but pull up, yeah. Like, I know that's like the American way of saying it. It's like, isn't it? I think, like, pull up to such and such a place. Um, yeah, it's it's just like, let's go to the, chi to the fish and chip shop. Stall it to the chipper. When you were knocking down for your mates when you were kids, it'd be you'd knock up to the door and the mother would answer the door, you'd be like a stewie stall now. Um So what I'm gonna do here is nope. No, will I Yeah, okay, let's screw it. Let's just we're going all in. Gather around the chipper. And it's a chippy in England. Which here is a, a chippy here. So it's a chipper here and then a, a chippy in England. And then a chippy here is a carpenter. But I, I th you might have that as well as a chippy. I don't know if that's an Irish thing. Chippy. chipper oh really a wood chipper that's a very specific thing to have like slang for well I guess what's a I heard a great one it's like a, a strimmer for trees in Australia oh any Australians in that know what that is it made me laugh they have like really literal uh, nicknames for stuff in Australia that are really funny um, oh, I can't remember what it is now yeah chipper sounds like sounds kind of Australian you say it. See, I'm after breaking the symmetry, and then as usual, as soon as I break the symmetry, I'm like doing things that I should have done while I had symmetry. Classic. That's okay. to swim probably. yeah yeah I can't say the word but they're potentially the only I can't can I say the word I don't know I don't know what the rules are with coursing on it so in Ireland we say it constantly but in Australia they say it even more and they actually use it as like a it's a nice turn of phrase um like it's like hey friend begins with a C 
rhymes with can't <laughs> in fact that's kind of how they say it when we say it, it's not a compliment it, it could be said like as a kind of joke but like for example like if you call the woman that here you will get you won't get slapped you'll get punched you'll get drop kicked but the way there's a oh, I can't even there's a great joke even about it about how we the way we say it sounds like a rock falling into water which I thought was hilarious but I can't actually do it for you Yeah, the Australian accent's awesome. I love the Australian accent. Although I say that, like, there's one. There's a ton of them. Cheers, Shane. Thanks for calling in. Catch you later, brother. What time are you looking at? Alright, we're just over. But I think we're alright for a bit. Uh, let me see. I like goblins in Clash of Ram. Clash of Rama. No, I didn't see that. Is that a game? Yeah, Kant is pretty close, yeah.
can't even tell what's straight anymore. I never leave you, Paul. I love you more than Shane. <laughs> Thanks, Voicer. <laughs> Such a such a gent. Yeah, I can't believe Shane abandoned us. Where does he get off? Goblins in Clash of Rama, is it? Can be a very good model for a stream. Okay, I'll check that out. There's a few things that I'm... So, to do the Cluedo characters, there's another... So, there's a, an artist, uh, David Budero. Um, I've done a bunch of his work before worked from a couple of his skulls before or sorry uh 2d designs before um on the like gangster characters and uh, it was a like grace lou uh, i can't even remember what i called them now um done like my instagram and our station um but david budero I did like I basically did like a series of David Budro designs sculpted the his designs because uh, I just really love his style um, and there's one there's one other one that he did and I, when I was talking to him he was talking about that one to me uh, that you would love to see it in 3D and he sent it to me and it was really cool and um, it's on his website you can find him on his he has instagram as well um, uh, Layla. it's not spelt like you know like the song l-a-y-l-a -L -A. it's like l-a-i-l-a -L -A, i think um but yeah um it's this really cool like she's got like big dreadlocks and stuff and like costume design and everything is awesome so i want to do that at some stage um, and then i also kind of the cyberpunk has me wanting to do like a kind of something in that kind of world because i haven't done anything like that in ages i used to love doing stuff like that I'm just looking for the flow of the lines here. Let's see. Same way if you were drawn, just look for the flow of the lines. What's causing lumpies there? Oh, it's this. Into that shape a little bit, it's a bit squidgy, it's not purdy. Duck eyes would look like Golgo tortillas. I don't know what that is, and it is a turkey. <laughs> Adamant it's a duck all night. I mean, let's face it, it could be a duck. Probably. I'd have to look up ducks.
people in neck nubbins. For good measure. So what I'm going to do is... Won't have time unfortunately to do it on the stream though. But I'll actually, I'll, I'll, I'll be doing this, the girl and the, the next one. Anyway. Um... I'm just gonna make like, I'm just gonna have like, you know, sh a bust essentially of the two characters. So like that angle, and then her here, and do a render of that. Um and yeah, I'll merge all the parts. Yeah, I'm gonna merge like the waddle, the head, these bits, the eyelids, into one piece. I'm gonna merge the beak into one piece. With this little bit here um yeah so and then i'm gonna have the body coming out here but you know that'll be cut off that won't be in the shot and i'm gonna have here i'll throw, I'll throw something in real quick So he was walking from here. Okay, so his body should be like here. So something like that. So his body will be here, and I'm gonna use um, a make. If I pull up a, I'll try pull up a turkey here. The feathers are almost like roof slates. Turkey, not the country. Okay, hold on. Yuck. Yeah, so you can see it there. Got these like like slates. So I'll make that in fiber. I'll make that like one of them and in fiber mesh. Um in fiber mesh just put that across or sorry in with nano mesh put that across this surface overlapping just to have the body a little bit same way with like a person you do like a bust to the shoulders oh we have some divisions There she goes, so stick a few of them around. Auto group, group split, okay. That's what I mean, like even on tor like turkeys, this is like fleshy. Ugh. They're not a sexy animal. something like that I might turn the body a bit more just to really get that feeling that his you know his head is turning back so like 
I want it to be a case of like he's like looking back over his shoulder at her, um, and she knows that. So that's the scene, you know. She knows that he's looking at her, and um, so it's a little bit flirty. Um, she's playing hard to get. And he's all besotted by her. Bless him. What's his name? You have to name him. I feel like... Hmm. I put them at like 25. <laughs> In 20 years. And he is... Out for... He's walking to work. He's um. He works as an intern in an accountancy agency, an accountants agency. Am I saying that right? And maybe he's getting on the train, and she's get she gets off at the stop that he gets on, so he sees her every morning. This is the first time he's seen her though. And he's all like, he's stressed because he's an intern, he's getting the coffee and he's not getting the opportunities he thinks he needs to prove himself and stuff. And he's all in his head, he's stressed out. And then she walks by and it's all just gone. An intern in the accountancy. <laughs> From 1953 Gunslinger movie. Those pets, how do you manage to keep it so smooth? Well, uh, how do I manage to keep it so smooth? You've been watching, so it's yeah. Just keep things, keep things relatively low poly. And only, only, only work into your higher subdivision levels to make your. specific marks that you need and uh, yeah that's how you kind of keep it clean that's what like if I use Dynamesh to do this I couldn't keep it this clean and that's not to say by the way that Dynamesh is bad <clears throat> but for this type of sculpt it doesn't that particular tool uh, isn't uh, as applicable so you know it's like uh, you can you can use the back of a screwdriver to hammer a nail in but you're better off using a hammer turkey tom yeah could be turkey tom um Yeah, it could be Turkey Tom, I guess. Yeah, I guess. What is it now? Yeah, it's going up to half. Um, yeah, so we'll leave it there for now. All I'm gonna, all I haven't done there, I, I could do it. Well. Yeah, I could guess I could do it on the next. No, I won't, because I want to just start on this one on the next one. So, but yeah, I'll just add those with the nano mesh and dyna mesh these together. That's all. So you're not missing anything. And uh, the next time, do the render of this. I might even be able to print these guys. Um, do a little platform with the two of them on it. Could be kind of cool. And um, yeah, I'll do a render and. Get that. I was about to look at my watch for the day. Idiot. Yeah, we can well get that done before Christmas. Yeah. We'll have a nice Christmas render. There's a 
like a you know, see, this is causing me trouble this bit in the topology you see it's giving a little edge there it's fairly easily fixed though anyway um yeah so i hope you like them i'm actually yeah i quite i quite like this guy he's he's, he's fun I like him like if I'm I feel like I feel like I go for a drink with this guy. Looks like a laugh. That was about, yeah, well, that's about two hours anyway now because we, we started a bit late because of technical mishaps. Um, Paul the alien murderer. <laughs> what have I missed? Um, let me keep moving around certain areas and the topology won't be even right. Keep moving around certain areas. Is that built-in material? Is that a built-in material in ZBrush? No, this is the Zebro. You can you can find that pretty easily if you Google ZBrush Zebro, so Z B R O materials. Yeah, you'll find it pretty handy. Um, do you use your mesh on a regular basis? Yeah, I do indeed. Um, very nice, Mal Paul. You have an ultra. You have ultra Bravo. I don't know what Ultra Bravo means, but I'm going to take that as a compliment. So thank you, Cena. Paul the Alien Murder. Don't know where that's coming from. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, but Paul, how would you merge those subtools without Dynamesh? No, I can use Dynamesh. And once they're Dynamesh together, then I'll um, duplicate the Dynamesh uh, mesh and Z remesh that. Add some, like Z remesh it low, add some subdivisions. And then project that onto the Dynamesh one. And then I can get rid of the Dynamesh one. So I have all the detail with the subdivisions on the new one. So that's what I do. And now I have a new piece and I can work into that. Um, thank you, Cena. No worries. It's actually Paul Deasy. In the flesh, kind of, through a screen. All right, guys. So we'll wrap it up there anyway. So thanks for joining. Um, I'll put all this stuff up on my socials and stuff. So if you're interested in that, you, know, you can follow me on uh, Instagram and uh, ArtStation are basically the two main ones. I pretty much the socials I use. Uh, there's a YouTube channel there that I update sometimes, um, and my own Twitch channel, Twitch Paul underscore DC. So. You can follow me there if you like, and I'll see you again here in two weeks. So, until then, guys, thanks for joining. I'll chat.